Paul Waldman again, writing at the Washington Post, under the heading, can we stop pretending Trump is fit to be president? And he writes at various times over the past three and a half years, many of us have asked what would happen if Trump truly went over the edge or if his behavior became so frightening that his unfitness for the most powerful position on earth could no longer be denied. <laughs> As if that hasn't happened. But then he follows up by saying, but the human capacity for denial, ours, is almost infinite. Let's review, Waldman writes, what our president has been up to in the past few days. And he wrote this a couple of days ago. He writes, with the death toll from COVID-19 topping 100,000, Trump has offered almost nothing in the way of tributes to the dead, sympathy for their families, or even acknowledgement of our national mourning by all accounts he is barely bothering to manage his administration's response to the pandemic, preferring to focus on cheerleading for an economic recovery he says is on the way, even as he feeds conspiracy theories about the death toll being inflated. This past weekend, he went golfing. In a Twitter spasm on Saturday and Sunday, Trump retweeted mockery of former Ge uh, Georgia gubernatory candidate Stacey Abrams' weight and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's looks, along with a tweet calling Hillary Clinton a skank. Eager to start a new culture war flare-up, he urged churches to open and gather parishioners in a room to breathe the same air, threatening that he would override governors who shut down orders he forbade. The president has no such power. He all but occupied talk show host Joe Scarborough, or accused Joe, uh, Joe Scarborough of murdering a young woman who died in his uh, then congressman's office, bringing untold torture to her family from the conspiracy theorists who will respond to this, all of his scum. He has repeatedly insisted that the upcoming election is being rigged because states run by both Republicans and Democrats are making it easier to vote by mail. And he's seeking to delegitimize a vote that has yet to occur. Despite all the evidence, substantial, that mail voting advantages neither party. That's just a synopsis of a few of the things I've been talking about the past couple of days, I realize. And Waldman writes, the truth is that Trump is not much more despicable of a human being than he has always been. It's just that standard Trumpian behavior becomes more horrifying when it occurs during an ongoing national crisis. It is reality that changed around him, and he was incapable of responding to it. We all know this. In public, Republicans may say that the real villain in the pandemic is China, or that all those deaths and the tens of thousands yet to come were inevitable, or that it is essential to get the economy moving, but they know as well as the rest of us do what a catastrophic failure Trump has been. So now, they, the Republicans, must own the moral, cho moral, moral choice that they've made. Back in 2016, you remember they said Trump would grow serious and sober once he was faced with the awesome responsibilities of the presidency of the United States. There was no reason at the time to think that would happen, but at least it was infinitesimally possible. Nobody can say that now. Not only do we know who Trump is, we know who he will always be. And we know that re-electing him will be disastrous, catastrophic, in a hundred different ways. Waldman says, 
you know, if, if, if you gave Republicans in Washington truth serum, they'd say, quote, of course he's unfit to be the president. Of course he's corrupt. Of course he's incompetent. Of course he's the most dishonest person ever to step into the Oval Office. But I can live with that because him being reelected means Republicans keep power and we get more conservative judges and we get all the policies we favor. End quote. And what are those policies, truth seeker? Hmm? I don't care how some of these writers disguise it. Those policies are fascistic. They're destructive. And they mean untold death, destruction, disaster is going to hit us. Waldman writes, that is their making, those Republicans. We all know it, even if they'll never say it out loud. I'm not sure, Waldman writes, how I'd feel or what I'd do if I was faced with a similar choice as a liberal, because it's impossible to imagine a liberal version of Trump becoming the nominee of the Democratic Party, or even what a liberal version of Trump would look like. But we can see how Democrats grappled recently with their own questions about former Vice President Joe Biden and the compromises they might have to make about him. When a woman named Tara Reid alleged that Biden had sexually assaulted her in the early 90s when she worked in the Senate office, the response among those who wished to see Trump defeated in November was complicated, to say the least. Some criticized Biden, some questioned Reid's story, and some remained agnostic pending further information, and some showing a forthrightness Republicans have not been willing to muster, said that even if they came to believe Tara Reid's story was true, they'd still vote for Biden, not just because Trump had been credibly accused of sexual misconduct by no fewer than two dozen women, but also because even if Biden turned out to be guilty, it would be unfortunate but necessary to choose him over the most dangerously unfit president in American history. Yeah. And in the days since Tara Reid's story surfaced, so many questions have been raised about her story that she has few defenders left. Her own lawyer dropped her as a client and that has left Democrats breathing a sigh of relief as they seem to have been excused from making a painful but necessary choice. Nevertheless, Democrats grappled candidly and publicly with what it would mean for them if Tara Reid had been telling the truth. The Republicans who support Trump have seldom done that, perhaps because there is no way to do so without acknowledging how morally indefensible that support has been, the support for Trump. And as we approach another election, Paul writes, they'll tell themselves that Trump isn't as bad as he looks or that Joe Biden is a monster or that all that matters, all that matters is winning. In the future, when we look back on this dark period, and I might add personally, if there is a future, Waldman says we should resist the temptation to focus solely on Trump himself. To do so would be to excuse those who know exactly what he is, but pretend they can work to keep him in office and remain unsullied themselves. They cannot and their moral culpability becomes clearer every day. Hey, True Seekers, Mike Malloy here. While you're sheltering in place and practicing safe social behavior, probably catching up on the Malloy cast, remember, we have a new weekly program just for our patron supporters. There are other thank you gifts for your support. Remember, visit MikeMalloy.com and click on the big patron link on the main page. You can't miss it, and we can't do without you.